Hey guys, I got a gear video for you today. I want to talk about the Fujinon 16mm f1.4 lens. Now I've had this lens for quite a while now. I picked it up essentially when it was released about two and a half, three years ago. And um, you know, everybody was talking about this is a shut up and buy it kind of thing. It's going to be legendary. I jumped on the bandwagon. I got my credit card out, bought it, came in the mail. I was like a kid on a Christmas morning. I went out in the backyard, took a couple fo fo photographs with it. And then I put it in my lens cabinet and it sat for like, I don't know, eight months, didn't use it. It had nothing to do with the lens. It was, it's a beautiful lens. It had to do more with the 16 millimeter focal length. It was just odd, at least initially for me. Um, if I went out and shot and did photography, I would either want something wider. My 12 millimeter prime was a go-to. Or if I was shooting portraits, I would you know use a 23 or 56 millimeter. Um, the 16 millimeter was like in between there. It wasn't really wide. It wasn't really long enough. So it just sat in my cabinet and I, I actually thought about selling it a couple times, but before I committed to selling it and had um, possible seller's remorse, I forced myself to give this a shot. I would throw this in the back and that's all I would have. I would leave my other lenses at home and, I, and I'm glad I did because I grew to really love this lens. Not only like it, I love it. It's one of my favorite Fuji lenses. And I originally thought like it didn't do any of the things well. And then I realized later that it does everything well. Um, that 16 millimeter, it's maybe not as wide as you might want it sometimes, but this lens, you could put it on the camera and rock with it. And you could go out and do street photography um, landscapes you could shoot in the city I'm gonna show you guys some photos where I uh, took this lens and I only took this lens with me in my X-T2 and I grabbed a, a small little zoom flash that's all I took a couple spare batteries and um, in Chicago big city and it was wonderful the f1.4 let me have a lot of light uh, for those indoor um, pictures that I needed um, close distance focus when I want to play around and do something a little creative. Um, it just, it works. It, it's a great lens and I highly recommend it. And I'm so glad, so glad I didn't sell it. So let me pop it off here for a second. It's, it's got hef, heft to it. You know, it's, it's heavier than like a 23 millimeter. I'm not going to get in all those specs. You guys can look them up, but you definitely know this thing is in your hand. It's, it's very well built. At least seems that way. It's aluminum, like a lot of, or all Fuji, um, X series lenses are. And it's a little bit bigger than, than some of the others too. So if you've got an X-T2 and X-T3, it's a great combo. It's not, um, you know, out of proportion, either size or weight. It's got a good balance to it. If you're rocking like a X-T20, X-T30, maybe not. It might be a little bit too big and heavy. Uh, obviously, they'll, they'll work because the X mount is the same, but you kind of defeat the whole point of having that small little camera if you, if you put one of these larger lenses on it. So um, that's just my, my opinion, but um, you know, it, the photo quality obviously is, is going to be the same. You have the aperture ring, F1.4 to F16 and you got this manual focus and it's got a clutch which i don't care for too much so you can engage the clutch disengage the clutch and the reason i don't like that is because the front button focus i just because of the way my fingers are much like back button focus i just program the front button and with if you didn't have this clutch you could kind of do a sudo auto slash manual and you can have the best of both worlds, but again, not a deal breaker. Um, what some, some other nice things about this lens. Micro contrast, unbelievable. It just, if you take a black and white photo, it just, wow, they, they're unbelievable. Colors, pop, um, there's just something about this. It's, it truly is like a magical lens. Um, it's f1.4. F the other thing that's cool about this lens is it's a 16 millimeter lens. Um, again, it's 24 millimeter focal length on a full frame. And you can render some awesome bokeh, especially if you, you know, are doing something close up. Like if I, it's my Apple pencil, it'll actually focus that close to the lens and it'll just like blow out the background. So if you're, you know, walking around the city and you see something cool and interesting, and you want to have a little bit of a creative photo and, and you want to blow out the background, you can do that with this lens. Um, I, like I said, I, I'm going to show you guys some pictures. I took this to Chicago 
and we went to see Hamilton. It was like a three day trip to Chicago. I only took this camera, X-T2, the 16 millimeter, Fujinon 1.4, and this is Zoom. A couple extra batteries. It was a very lightweight, small kit because we were taking the, uh, the train in, uh, the commuter train in. We just had a, a, a small, small backpacks for our uh, hotel a couple days and um, we walked to the uh, hotel. It was only a couple streets down. So I, I um, took this and, and I had a fantastic experience. Yes, it maybe you want it a little bit wider with some of the um, the skyscrapers, the buildings, but it worked out great. Um, I got some really cool photos and um, no regrets at all buying it nor taking it on the Chicago trips. Now let's go ahead and take a look at those Chicago pictures. Now remember, these are totally straight out of out of camera JPEGs. I didn't edit them at all. A couple are either maybe a little overexposed or a little underexposed, but I want you guys to get an idea of what you could expect from this lens or if you have the X-T2 in a combination. And uh, let me know what you think, guys. Thanks for watching. So anytime we go into Chicago, we take the commuter train to get downtown. And this is us waiting for the train. Um, I was playing around. I took some other photos of the train station, but um, I wanted to grab the shot of my son. This is, again, 16 millimeter. All these pictures are from that 16 millimeter lens. And it doesn't do bad for portraits. Um, this is 1.4 and it's 5,400 hundredths of a second. I'm using the electronic uh, curtain to kind of pull down some of that light. And as you can see, it, it renders good. A little bit of bokeh for a 16 millimeter lens. It's actually pretty good bokeh. So let's go on to the, uh, the next picture is we were in front of some comic store. Thought it was really cool. My son was uh, taking a selfie. I don't know if it was Instagram or sending something to his friend, but I thought it was cool. The uh, the character in the in the back had that same fist that he was making, like the Hulk. Um, yeah, just pretty cool. Um, and then inside, we we ate most of the time. We like food, so um, I wanted to take a lot of pictures just to kind of remember the places we went, the places we stopped, and, and maybe share dessert. We didn't all get desserts. I mean, we do like to eat, but we didn't get crazy. But as you can see, this is f1.8, um, one um, over 180, and uh, you know, really cool. Um, really does well inside. And this is a ISO 400 um, f1.8. If you guys don't know, to the right bottom, you'll see what my um, what my uh, lens or my camera was set at. Um, but you can see great in interior, especially when you need that that light to uh, to kind of help out when when the room is a little bit on the darker side, which they tend to be if you're inside. Here's a, a picture just out walking around the street f5 200 one over 350 just kind of crossing the road, thought it was kind of different. And um, this one, this is just, this is some food court type of upscale food court just down the street from the hotel we were staying at. And they had these cool lights and uh, thought it was cool. This is the one that you know, I under, underexposed a little different. This is a JPEG. The raw picture that I took, I did a little work on it, but as you can see, it just had these cool lights in the background. Um, another example of um, you know being able to do some somewhat of a, a portrait. Now, hindsight, if I would have shot this again, I probably would have went lower, but my wife was probably yelling at me to hurry up. I can't remember exactly, but another uh, another picture inside, um, you know, same place. Uh, this this is just an example of one of the the places we stopped and we shared a cookie um, you can see in a in a couple seconds but the renders the colors these are kind of not really you know popping colors but you see a lot of these yellows um, sometimes it it kind of uh, will have that yellow cast and really shades out the white the fuji xt2 with the 1.4 um, i thought it did did a really good job capturing the moment there here's the uh the cookie i was telling you about and I got close to the cookie. I can't remember exactly how close, but as you can see, they had these cool lights in the background, the bokeh. And this is a 16 millimeter one, uh, 1 1.4 lens. I shot this at 1.4, ISO 2000, and it was fantastic. Um, kind of a cool look. I was just trying to capture that cookie. <laughs> it was actually a good cookie too. Uh, this is our hotel on the inside. Uh, not, not a great, uh, you know, picture of anything important, but I just wanted to kind of show. There was no windows anywhere, and this is um, 1.4 uh, ISO 640, and it just captured that that room 
uh, pretty well. One of the advantages of 16 millimeter is you can shoot it at 1.4, and as you can see, most of this f photo is is in it's in uh, focus. Now, if I was shooting at a 23 millimeter at 1.4. I'm gonna get just a few of these things in focus. So it could either help you or uh, hurt you. In this case, it it um, it, it helped me. So um, lets me let in a lot of light, but also um, get a lot in focus. So here's a, a, a cityscape, a skyscraper. I don't know if it qualifies as a skyscraper, but a very tall building. And um, I thought it was a cool picture, so um, I took the picture. And this is a, a lunch every time we go there. Giordano's, I don't know if I'm saying it right. But as you can see, it's across the street. Not a crazy great picture, but uh, um, I always get excited about eating here when, when we're in Chicago. And this is an example about getting close. I could have gotten even closer to this beer glass. And um, uh, I shot this at 1.4 again, 1250 is the ISO. And it just, you know, blows out the background. And I'm not as close as this thing will focus. It does a great job. Indoors, when you're eating, like for food photography, uh, it, it does a great job. And here's a shot of the pizza. Uh, this picture, meh, I don't know. I almost deleted it, but I left it in. Here's a slice. It's what they call their stuffed pizza. Uh, I know uh, if you guys have any comments about pizza we uh, we usually go to Giordano's but if there's some other ones I've had Lou's too um, if there's some others please leave it in a comment we try to get to Chicago once a year I don't know if it's in the plans for this year but I do like the city um, I like food so <laughs> this is a cool one um, I got the flag in the background we were walking it was kind of getting late and I thought it'd be cool to get the flag and and some of these pictures I just I got low and um, I shot at f2 and um, I had a flash this flat little flash that I had with me uh, the zoom mini popped it just to light up him and uh, if not he would be all you know dark and and uh, underexposed so I, I kind of like that that photo and this is starting to get night at night time and you can see um, I'm shooting this at uh, um, almost a native. It's 250 ISO, but it's just kind of cool with the lights. It's just kind of coming. Uh, lights are coming, coming out, and it's starting to get dark, but but not completely dark at the same time. And this is our hotel, um, the Hampton Inn. We stayed. We went and um, seen the Hamilton, and uh, we stayed at the hotel right at the show, which was convenient and really cool. I like that area. The, uh, the commuter train drops you off in Millennial Station, which Millennial Park is just past maybe two or three blocks uh, forward of this picture. Um, everything in that area was just very convenient. Walking, we didn't take an Uber or Lyft or cab or anything. This is just a closer picture um, of our hotel and the Hamilton show. And uh, and yeah, it was a it was actually a really nice hotel. The people were nice. If you guys are wanting to see Hamilton, I know they're traveling a little bit, but I uh, I recommend it. I'm not one into uh, that likes the musicals. My son and wife really wanted to see it, but uh, I I did. I enjoyed it. Um, it was pretty good. Just in the hotel, they had like these uh, breakfast bars, and uh, my son just eating some M and M's. One of the cool things that they have there is Blick. It's a art place. My son's into art, and uh, it was pretty neat. It was right around the corner from the hotel, and uh, we walked in here. And uh, you can kind of get an idea that with this Fuji 16 millimeter, you can grab focus and kind of blow out your background. And then this next picture is like really getting closer and totally blowing out the background, just kind of showing you guys um, what it can do as far as getting a little creative. Uh, I was even playing around a little bit more here until uh, I think my wife was like, come on, come on. Uh, I'm always trailing behind. So we stopped and had a little dessert at this Mon 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 Magnolia Bakery, Magolia. And um, I guess they're famous for their, their banana pudding, which is really good. We had some kind of cheesecake when we were in there. And uh, everything they had just looked wonderful. I love food, as you can see. Um, cupcakes, they're making banana pudding all day long. 
And this is the uh, this is the cheesecake that we had. It had some kind of blackberries or blueberries on top. It was okay. I should have just went with the uh, with the banana pudding uh, next time when we go there. I'll just get the banana pudding. Um, this is the Chicago Theater. Pretty cool picture. Some more cityscapes. And this is 2.8. And, and again, since everything is out that far, everything's going to be in focus. So Trump Tower. My son always wanted to see the Trump Tower. So that was one of the, the stops we made. Um, it, 16 millimeter. Sometimes, you know, it's a little bit of work to get the whole the whole uh, building in um, in focus or not in focus, but in frame. But uh, we were able to do that or I was able to do it with the 16 millimeter. This is kind of a cool picture. Uh, maybe not the coolest, but I kind of like the um, the way it was framed and the architecture is kind of neat. And it was right next to this ice cream parlor that we were uh, about to head into. Uh, gee, we didn't eat all these things on the first day. We did eat a lot, but this is over like three or four days. And all we did is go shopping and eat. So um, they have a, a, a Giardelli chocolate, which we don't go in there for the chocolate. We go in there for the um, for the ice cream. So they have one, the only two that I've been is in Chicago. And this one, I think they might have a couple in Chicago, but this one's right at the river by the bridge. And then they have uh, the one I've been to is in Disney World. But we always get the same thing. We go there, we get this big. I'll show you guys in a minute. Um, but I thought that was kind of a cool sign. Um, and I shot that at 5.6. And sometimes I probably should have shot it at like 2.8. But a lot of times I'm going outside, inside, and I'm, I'm having auto ISO. And this shot at a 4,000 ISO, and it's a good photo. Um, so it just goes to show you that even the high ISOs are um, fine. So here's our ice cream. We just kind of sat, and we all split it, and we sat and looked over the river for a while. And um, it's it's like a hot fudge brownie type of thing, and it's it's fantastic. You get like a head rush when you eat it. If you have never been to Girardelli, uh, go there and uh, get the hot fudge. I think they have two sizes of this. <laughs> Uh, I should be a food reviewer, not a, a photographer guy. So in, this is another one. It's a little underexposed, but um, you know, I just on my own personal picture, I boosted the um, the shadows, and it was a totally workable. And I I even boosted the shadows on, on these um, when I'm when I'm doing something quick. Uh, I'll go ahead and do it. Uh, I'll boost the shadows in JPEG if it just needs a little bit uh, up or down. And they're fine, and I, I push them right to Google Photos, so uh, you don't necessarily need to play with RAWs. But if you're trying to print something and do it really nice, obviously RAW, you're going to get more details. Uh, and this is just us outside, that same spot, nice little area in front of the Trump Tower. Um, I use a flash here, you can see it on my son's eye. And again, I, um, I exposed for the background and uh, popped a little bit of a light on him in the flash. And this is a cool place, uh, Stan's Donuts. We uh, we walked in here. We didn't get anything. My, my son wanted to get a donut, but um, they were busy and we, we weren't really hungry. So this is one time we uh, raised a red flag and said, hey, let's just uh, walk out. Really cool kind of place, though. They got the donuts on the ceilings. You can see this in this photo. The colors and, and everything. It's pretty cool. And uh, I was shooting this at 1.8. Uh, uh, 320 ISO and um, yeah I don't like uh, I don't like blurry people in in my photo so um, that's where the image stabilization um, it, it's good if you're like shooting those cabinets that I showed you with the food in it but anytime there's people in you know you, you got you got to have your your shutter over 120 oh, over 100 120 I can't even talk today blah 125 so um, so that they're not blurring um, just on the normal hand movements and, and, and walking around. So, um, and this is just some lady in the street. I just thought it was cool with the clock and the lady there waiting and the people crossing. Um, and, and that's really it, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this might have helped you. Um, you know, if you're on the fence about buying the 16 millimeter 1.4, I highly recommend it. And like I said, I... I, I took a whole trip to Chicago, three days. That was the only lens I took. And I wasn't really wanting more, uh, except for maybe that Trump Tower. I had to work a little bit to get that whole thing in, in frame. But um, but yeah, great lens, highly recommend it. But watch for it to go on sale. Um, I paid $800 for it. 
I think right now it's about a grand. So they, they do drop in price. They Fuji run sales all the time. I don't know why they do that. They just should they should just lower the price and keep it that way. It's one of my one of my pet peeves on, on Fuji. Sometimes I'll want to pick up a lens and um, and I just won't pay that that premium tax. I'll wait for it to go on sale. So I hope you guys like this and thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day.